Share one is actually from, any, if you go on any social media, you would see the one sign that they're holding is of the Eiffel Tower. It's sort of blown up Twitter and, and Facebook. And even if you had listened Friday night to Fox News or CNN or uh, even the BBC, uh, it was clear that the social media was how people found out uh, what was going on. But I want to point out in the lower corner here, because we, we need to think more than Paris. Uh, actually, on Thursday, uh, this young man named Adele, he's holding his young daughter. Uh, he was in a marketplace in Beirut and saw uh, there was actually a bomb that went off with suicide bombers. And he saw another bomber, and while he was holding his daughter, he tackled the bomber, and the bomber actually discharged his bomb, and now it killed him. But actually, by that sacrifice, and that's sort of this idea of living generously, it's like sometimes we're not sure what God calls us to be, be a part of. Is it, he and his daughter gave up their life, but they're convinced that he probably saved two or 300 lives in the marketplace. And so there's, we just need to be mindful of that this morning as we, as we come together. And so I, before we even start in the message, I just want us to pray, not only for, for Paris, because we need to pay, pray for Paris, but to pray for Beirut and to pray for Syria and to pray literally for the world because as I was talking with some folks yesterday, we were just this idea that the, the world is a much different place and that these young men that willingly gave up their lives there in Paris is just one more. Uh, and as we talk about our own shores and the safety there, um, it's just like, where do we stop? Because it's the balance between civil liberties and, and our freedoms and if you think just about the amount of money that our government has spent to keep us safe, and yet, even in a place like Paris, it's not possible. And, and so we really do need to run to the refuge of God as our tower of strength. So would you pray with me? Uh, Father, this morning we were mindful of uh, literally hundreds of lives that have been impacted because of this thing uh, of just brokenness. Really, it's about people who, who think they have a view of the world, that they don't understand your place. And Jesus, we know that even in their lives, you've come to redeem them. And so we pray that um, we would see you as our refuge and our strength. And we pray for Paris. We pray for the church there in Paris that is giving literally people who are opening their homes and, and giving encouragement in the midst of this craziness. Um, we pray for the medical uh, in the first responders, and we just pray not only for, for there, but for, for the people in Beirut who live in the midst of this in Lebanon, and for the, 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 the amazing number of refugees that are leaving Syria. And, and yet we know, Jesus, that you said that you know, the poor are always going to be with us. We also know that war is always going to be part of who we are, because we're just broken. And so we pray that for clarity, we pray for those agencies that are giving response. We pray for the hospitals. We pray for the caregivers that in all that. And we just pray for our leaders as they think about how to respond to this, not just here in our own community and in our own country, but around the world. And so God, we just know that that's not your desire. We know that this, the rumor of wars and wars is the direct result of our sin in Genesis of rebelling against you, uh, that you want us to worship you and to be in relationship with you. And yet, we just know that, that we get that wrong. And so we just pray this morning that you would encourage us to see that you are the strength no matter what happens. And so we thank you for that. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I encourage you to get your worship notes um, this morning as we begin sort of this fourth of five weeks. Uh, we've got one more week in, in this message. Um, as we sort of talk about living generously. Um, and this morning is sort of a full morning because not only are we walking through this message, but I'm excited because we've got uh, we've got a baptism this morning, and then out of that we'll have uh, receive our new members who've been pushing through uh, three weeks of conversation about what it means to be a stakeholder here. But there in your worship notes, and, and I, I'll point it out again here, is that really this has been trying to help you shape your understanding about what it means to live generously. And it's about living, literally, living. Um, it's not just about giving away some money, because normally that's when we think of with money with the idea of generosity, but it's really about our heart. And so what I've tried to challenge you with in this conversation through this series of messages is really to think about how do we change that perspective. And so I'll remind you that you know we sent you home last week with the, the tension of the, soup, uh, the spoon versus the ladle. There's a few of these still out there, but if you brought yours back, you can take your card off, there's a pair of scissors, cut it and hang it up on the, on the board with, with a... Uh, a closed pen, and we'll actually, the ladles are going to go to our pots and pans ministry. Uh, but let's just to pick up the conversation with Frank this morning and, uh, and, and Ray as they lean into this idea of God being the strong tower. 
somebody who will. That's not how it was explained to me. Fine, fix it, then get back to me. Hey, it's been great having you guys out in the soup kitchen lately. Cassie's on her way back down there now, actually. Yeah, I, I heard. I suppose you heard all that other stuff too, huh? It's about our trust. Uh, trust is very important. The Bible has a lot to say about it. No, I, I mean trusts with an S. You know, planning our future, financial security. That's what I talked about too. Uh, I've got this intentionally defective grant of trust. Intentionally defective. Yeah. I think I see your problem. <laughs> Hello? Yes? What? I'm on my way right now. It's Cassie. Cassie Donovan, I'm her husband. Sir, I'm going to need you to wait in the waiting room. I'm sorry. I'll have someone come out and talk to you. No, I, I need to see her now. Where is she? Sir, you can't Here's be... Here's Donovan. I'm Dr. Harris. Are, are you treating my wife? Uh, the police said something about her being mugged? No, why don't we find somewhere to have a seat? I, I don't need to sit. Is she okay? Mr. Donovan, your wife has suffered a subdural hematoma. Now, our main concern is that the hematoma could continue to bleed and put pressure on her brain, cutting off the flow of oxygen. She's in an induced coma right now to keep that thing out of me. Coma? What are you talking about? An induced coma. We hope it won't be for very long. I need to see her now! Mr. Donovan, I know this isn't easy for you, but you need to allow us to do our jobs. But why don't you go for a walk? We have your number. We'll give you a call just as soon as you can come back. Mr. Donovan? Your friend asked me to tell you he went to the top floor if you needed him. Ray, what are you doing? Just getting some fresh air and perspective. All the fundraisers and dinners we've had for this place, and they won't let me see her? How do you know about this place? Well, it was a season when they could have charged me wet all the time I spent up here. What are you talking about? About her, my wife. She was here. Cancer. Sorry, I didn't know. It's okay, I never came up with those bulging, I guess. It was before I was homeless. Actually, it's mostly why I was homeless. I spent a good chunk of three months up here. Hiding from the Lugodium and fluorescent lights. I would look out there, see all those buildings full of people who had so much more than I had. More money, more health. And I hated them more. And one day, when I was in a particularly cranky mood, <laughs> Roger kicked me out of the room, so me. You're surpassing cancer on my list of biggest buzz skills. <laughs> it 
then she had it be her private. She says, you take that book and you go up to that room and don't you come back in here until you have a good word to share. <laughs> I tell you what, God gave me that good word too, boy. The name of the Lord was a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. It's like an unscalable wall in his own imagination. We build up those walls with our jobs, our money. We trust and trust. But they're not real. But when your wife gets cancer, or is it an accident? You learn that real quick. How do you know when we're building imaginary walls? Or when we're just being wise with our money? I guess when you stop thinking of it as our money. Why we pray for gas? To the real strong time. So again, I, I don't know about you, but as I was even going over my notes last night, it just I was just caught in the moment that um, how quickly life changes. Uh, how six different sites in the city of Paris became uh, the sites of people's last moments, and and yet I'm not sure, given more money and more police officers, that actually that we could stop those things from happening. And so I think the conversation that Ray and Frank are having as we've sort of followed through, it, it really is trying to understand this idea of giving your life sacrificially. And even the young family, I showed you the dad, Adele and his daughter, um, I'm sure as they went to the marketplace on Thursday morning, his intent was not to give up his life. And we have to wrestle with that uh, because as I, have, I think I've shared before, you know, this country that we live in, this land that we call our home, as we celebrated this past week, Veterans Day, as we sort of take into to account our freedoms, is that it came with great cost. And so we need to value that. Um, we need to value that. So just as we push through these thoughts this morning, first of all, the first thought is that it's a matter of trust, or I have sort of the letter S there in, in brackets, because you see, you know, as we see Frank, he, he, the movie, the video this week opens up, he's under stress, there's obviously something going on with his finances, and you know, how, how do we carry stress? Um, what are the walls that we build around our life uh, to help keep that stress away? Uh, um, and we find out that the walls that we've built aren't as strong as, uh, as we thought they may be. Because you see, we all, and this is the first point this morning, is we strive for protection, but what does that bring? Because there's a cost to protection. We can do all sorts of things, close our borders, we can increase the police department, the fire department, the, you know, the, 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 even the idea of martial law like that was established, but there's a financial cost to that. And then that means that more taxes, and I don't know about you, but we're all struggling with the idea of the burden of what we pay to support our, our local uh, public things. And, and that's the, sort of the, the sacrifice that we make to have safe parks, to have a safe community. But, but in doing that, it brings this idea of stress. And so part of what I want to try to walk us through this morning is that um, this idea, first of all, you know, some people would say, well, where was God in this? Um, I want us to see very clearly that, that God does not bring stress. That actually, as I prayed, that the mess in Beirut or the mess in Paris or the mess here in our world, you know, in our life in 9-11, all these things are brought about because we live in a world that's broken. A, a world that since its creation, since the story of Adam and Eve, has been trying to find its place in the larger story. And yes, there is pressure in life, and yes, there are trials in life, and we have to, and that's why the church is so important, that's why what we do here as we worship in a gathering every week is to encourage each other and to celebrate, as we will this morning, a new chapter for Clark. 
a new chapter for Gail and, 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 and Chuck as, as uh, Clark moves to a new community. And what that means for the choir, because it's now an empty seat in the choir, which means some of you that maybe think about singing, you know, that, that we could use your, your place in that. Um, but this idea of stress comes because things are, as, as Paul says, and I love even the way C.S. Lewis talks about, things are not right with the world. It's not the way it's supposed to be. It's not what God desires. And we need to be reminded this morning, the verse there that's in your, your worship notes, is simply this. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And I know that I was fearful on Friday night. I was fearful because I actually know where Berenice lives and it was concerned that you know Friday night in, in Paris, that all the young 20-somethings, 30-somethings, they were out doing what you would do as we do on a Friday night. And realizing that uh, whether it was a soccer stadium or a, a theater where an American band was playing and realizing that, that it really does sort of cause us pause. And I think we need to wrestle with that. And yet in that, Jesus does give us peace even in the midst of the brokenness, even in the midst of, uh, of where our life is taken, because Jesus wants us to see that it's not just about this life. That as we've talked through our, our year together, year plus a couple months, it's really about, that it's not about us on the one hand, but it is about God, and it's also about the journey he invites us into, and there is a life that we believe that comes after this life. And yet we, we miss people who pass on to, the, to that next life, but we know that this life, and that's the hope of the gospel, that's what we sort of, uh, want to lean into literally every day to know that and to be reminded of that. Um, and Jesus says he gives us peace not as the world gives. But see, when we lack that peace, it's time to make sure what we're doing is in line with what God is wanting to do. So, for example, I, I've had numerous conversations with students over the years, and you know they're all panicked about their studies. Well, God wants to make them better through their studies. That's why we have schools and we have education. And yet, they have to do their part. And, and as long as they continue not to do their part, then there's going to be stress in the world. There's, no, there's going to be unhappiness with mom and dad and with the teacher and progress book and all these things because it's meant to be complicated because we believe as human beings that you can actually excel and you actually can become better. And there are ideas, grand ideas of what it means to be brave and courageous and what truth is. And then how that's, how that's lived out is, as we become uh, doctors and, and mechanics and, and uh, dentists and, and teachers and as we lean into using our talents and our gifts. Uh, and so, but when we look at Ray, uh, we realize that there's a peace that he has. Uh, and, and, and we also know that we finally found out that the story he's been walking through is messy in a different way. But there seems to be a centeredness to him. And so there's these imaginary walls that we put up. I mean, you think about Frank, as we've seen in the last three weeks. I mean, the dude has an impressive life. I mean, really, he, it's clearly he's wealthy. Um, it's clearly that he's a nice guy. He has an amazing house. He has an amazing pool. It's clear he's got an investment banker that comes and spends time with him and, and sort of helps him figure it all out. Uh, and even his financial plan, planner uh, is impressed by him. But, but Frank learns, as we all do, that when push comes to shove, those walls can do precious little the messiness of our life, that Frank's investments cannot save his wife from being mugged by a purse snatcher. Uh, so I want to say again, as we did last week, and I was so grateful that my friend Brady Groves was here, to, to say that, that we have a responsibility to be good stewards and to do financial planning. And so the idea, I think, is just amazing that the heart of a few people in 1945 got together and said, we want to make the, the community of, of Mansfield and Richland County better. And, and I don't know if you've heard the number, but since 1945, $70 million has been given to this community to improve lives uh, through, through the hospital, through the library, through all sorts of amazing institutions that we have as free people. And that is just an amazing thing. Um, and so financial planning is important. We need to be able, and so that's even why we're in this series. And so this, this week, uh, hopefully you've got sort of our, our, our budget for the next year because we want to be good stewards. We want to try to lay it out so that you know what we're asking you to be a stakeholder in and an investor in. And I really believe as we've walked as your stewardship team, your, your generosity team, as I want to call them, of really trying to help you see that, that what's your investment, just like putting money in a savings account, that by your investing in, your, in Linden Road through your time and your talent and your treasures, 
that there's something that God can do. Because see, God isn't just trying to get your cash, although that's helpful. What God really wants is he wants you to, to sort of break for him in your heart. Um, and it's clear that Frank was leaning on, on his financial state, his imaginary walls, and as we can sort of see, and we'll see even next week, how those things uh, can, can, can sort of create some difficulty. Now, it's interesting that Ray shares the scripture with him. Uh, Proverbs 18, 11. A rich man's wealth is his strong city and like a high wall in his own imagination because there are things that can come against you. The market can go south as it did in 2008. Uh, the housing bubble can happen. The tech bubble can happen. And so those great investments you have all of a sudden can disappear. But what's interesting is that the verse that precedes this verse, actually Proverbs 18, 10, Ray also mentions, he says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous runs into it and is safe. See, Ray learned the difference between tower, you know, this idea of what it means to live in the tower. It's a perspective thing. The idea that it's, it's, it's actually the strength. You see, um, we need to understand that our walls crumble easily, but the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And, and I'm not sure that if I was in that theater and taking cover uh, to protect my life, how I would respond in that moment to really trust God, but it's in those moments that we have to trust God. Uh, so we run into it. Um, now, Ray also unlocks another important piece in this conversation with Frank. Um, he also helps him to see this, that there is a difference between building imaginary walls and being smart with your money. Actually, it's the conversation that he's asked into. It's like, okay, you need to stop thinking of it as your money. It's God's money. It's even not your life, it's God's life that he's given you. And so we really don't know what we have uh, because we only have the moment that we're in. Um, Job, for example, here. Uh, Job says this, If I have put my trust in gold or said to pure gold, you are my security, if I have rejoiced over my great wealth, the fortune my hands had gained, then also these would be sins to be judged, for I would have been unfaithful to God on high. You see, I want to say this again. We've heard this a couple different ways. It is not about us. It's about God and about God's faithfulness. Now, I want you to know, too, that it's not only uh, that there's not only a hard lesson here for people who have wealth, but it's also when we think about what Ray talked about. He touched on it. Or, uh, he, he said that, you know, that he became angry at those around him. Um, and, and then the writer of Proverbs says this. Um, Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, Who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. Uh, you know, that writer of Proverbs knew a, a couple things about our humanity, about our human nature. Just as Frank has been trusting in the abundance of his finances and Ray's past, he had dishonored the name of God by hating those uh, that had more. So this is where I want us to, to end this morning, is that we all face trouble in this life. We are tested and sometimes feel overwhelmed, but when we can call upon the name of the Lord, He is the strong tower and He will be there for us. And so as you think about this week, um, as a believer, what, what does running to the strong tower look like? Um, I mean, one suggestion that would be is it's about running to Jesus Christ, about running to His Word, and about running to His people that we can lift each other up in prayer. And so you've got in your worship program sort of some more homework to take home. There's actually a couple prayers there, some thoughts to think through. But this morning I want to just turn for a moment. I think there's somebody behind this door. Maybe we should invite in. Who's here? Come on up. Since you, I think those of you have seen them for a while, you want to come over and get on the stage? They've got a song they want to share with you this morning. Uh, yeah, here we go. And you get to sing along with it too, so come on up here and have a seat. Come on up. They've been practicing the last couple weeks, and we thought this morning we'd let them. And again, it's just weird how God works, because the song that they're going to share with you is one that you're actually invited to sing along with too. It's called Unshakable, and I just think given Thursday, given Friday in Paris, Thursday in, in Beirut, or even this morning as we're thinking about... So, here we go. You ready? And don't be afraid to sing along. With
nicely done. You want to have a seat here because there's a couple things we're going to do, and I don't want you to miss the opportunity to watch this because this is like a cool thing. Um, uh, a nice thing to celebrate in the life of the church. So do you, do, do you know what baptism is? What's baptism? Elizabeth. You put water on their head, yep. Do you know why you do that? Is that like taking a shower or... No? <laughs> well, it's part of a ritual, of, of, and ritual is a big word, but to, just to celebrate the fact that somebody has made a profession of faith to say they love Jesus um, is that we baptize. Um, sometimes is we baptize as an infant to say the parents are saying, I'm going to dedicate to you, God, my child. And so we, we create that opportunity. And some churches, like the church I came from, we would wait till someone says, I believe in Jesus, and then we take them to the river. And literally, the river, the Mahican River, and we'd push them under. And we'd let them bubble a little bit and then let them up and <laughs> so that we knew it took. Um, but that idea of coming up out of the water is sort of a, a picture that, that when they go in under, they're dead to sin and, and are dead, dead to life. And they come up out of the water and it's that Christ makes them alive. And so, But this morning, we're going to celebrate a baptism. So let me just read a couple scriptures here. And uh, it set up our conversation. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And these words from 1 Peter, you are a chosen race. He says, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called you out of darkness into God's marvelous light. And so part of what governs us as a church, just like we have this book called the Book of Order, it helps us understand so that we can invite people into this relationship. We want to obey uh, the words of God through Jesus, that we want to baptize those whom God has called. And so what happens in baptism is that God claims us and he literally seals us, like closing an envelope shut, um, and, and establishes forever that we belong to him. And God frees us then from sin and death, and he unites us with Jesus Christ. Now, I want to say that there's nothing magical about the water we're going to use here in a moment. And it really is just a place where we pause to be mindful that this is what the church has done for 2,000 years to celebrate uh, a person deciding that they want to become a member of a church. So this morning, it's my pleasure to... Um, introduce uh, Anna Horton and Anna if you'll come up and I want to invite uh, first Abby if you'll come up and help me with this um, let me just pull this away here um, just a second here now so Anna putting your whole trust in Jesus Christ do you desire to be baptized if so answer I do okay and to you the congregation of Linden Road do you as members of Linden Road and of the Church of Jesus Christ do you promise to guide and nurture and encourage Anna by word and deed with love and prayer, encourage her to know and follow Jesus Christ and to be a faithful member of this his church? If so, answer we do. Amen. Again, I just wanted to set up again this idea of what actually happens in baptism that we're going to do just here in a moment. A lot happens, but we'll not see it if we are preoccupied with our own choices. And so for those of us that have been baptized into the church, we're encouraged as we, as we celebrate Anna making this step in her journey that we are mindful of our own journey. Uh, it's a, the identity that begins with us. So, Abby, if you'll pour the water into the, into the font, let me just say this. Water cleanses, it purifies, it refreshes, it sustains, and then most of all, Jesus is the living water. And through baptism, Christ calls us to a new obedience, to love and to trust God completely, to forsake the evil of the world, and to live a new and holy life. Yet when we fall into sin, we must not despair of God's mercy or continue to sin, for baptism is the sign and the seal of God's eternal covenant of grace with us. And that's mindful as we even remember our own baptism. So let me just pray. Father, we, we pray you send your spirit into this water. Uh, that you would, uh, this water would be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth, that you would use it to wash away the sins of all who are cleansed by it, uh, raise them to new life, and, and to graft us into the body of Christ. And we pray especially for, for Anna this morning, as you just want you to pour your Holy Spirit upon her, 
and that she may have a power to do your will and to continue forever in the amazing risen life of Jesus Christ. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, be all praise, honor, and glory now and forever. Amen. So. Anna, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Father, we just thank you for Anna's life. We thank you for the journey that you've had her on and the way you continue to show up in that and even this morning as we celebrate just the fact that you've, uh, you've given her grace and mercy. And we thank you for the family that she represents. And we just pray that even now today as, she's, as we celebrate her joining up, uh, this fellowship, this, this body of believers, that in that she would be encouraged because of what you've done. And, and we just thank you for the opportunity we have as a church to come alongside her. We thank you for the beauty of who she is. We thank you for her talents and for her time that she's given. And we just pray, Father, uh, in these days ahead, that she would sense your delight as a daughter of the great King. We thank you, Jesus, for life that comes through you. And we celebrate now as she uh, celebrates us being your daughter. And we all pray it in your most precious name, Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Okay, I'd like to invite um, the rest of the new member class. So if you'll come up and join me, we've got, um, let's see, we've got uh, Dan and Kim Black, and we've, we've got Peggy Bricker, and you know, some of these folks I know you've, you've seen sitting here for a while, but we just really want to honor the fact that they've pushed in to three amazing weeks of conversation and dialogue, and uh, trying to understand what it means to be a member of the church, uh, what that looks like and the responsibility. And we have Stephanie Sexton and also Craig and, and Sarah Woods that are gonna be joining us this morning. Um, so uh, I, I present these individuals to you to make their public profession of faith, to reaffirm their baptismal covenant into which they were baptized. And we rejoice, uh, I rejoice and we rejoice as a church that you have declared your faith and you wanna share with us in common ministry. We rejoice with you as you claim again the promise of God, which are yours through your baptism. And it's through baptism that we all enter into this covenant that God has established. That's why baptism is a requirement to be a part of our church. And that covenant God gives us new life, and we are guarded from evil and nurtured by love of God and God's, uh, uh, God's people. So I ask you all, therefore, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we are baptized. So here's some questions for you. We call these renunciations. It's a big word, but these are the things that we're asking you to reject. Uh, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, answer, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, answer, I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love to each other? If so, answer, I will. So I would ask the whole church to stand now as we confess our faith together. Um, and I ask you as the church, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ. this morning uh, your your faith so a couple more questions uh, will you be a faithful member of this congregation London Road Presbyterian will you share in its worship and ministry through your prayers and gifts your study and your service and so fulfill your calling to be a disciple of Jesus Christ if so answer I will with God's help 
Will you devote yourself to the church's teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the, and the prayers? If so answer, I will. People of God, the church, will you promise to uphold and support these new members of our family in their lives in Jesus Christ? If so, answer, we will. Amen. Father God, upon and uphold and de defend by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. We pray your blessing upon these, your daughters and sons, that they would feel equipped this morning in the encouragement of being in our fellowship. And we pray it in your name. Amen. Would you please welcome... These are the new members of Linden Road. Now, one of the things I would like to do, just because of Clark, so this is an interesting morning where we're celebrating Clark, actually a new chapter in his life, moving to a new community, but how he's been a part of this. And, and you heard that you know, he's been on session and been faithful to the, the choir. And we are going to call on Wednesday night just to see if you are reciting the blessing, just so you know, about 7.45. Okay, but I want us to come down, and then as the elders, just we'll all come down so we can be next to Clark. So follow me, and then we're going to do a little, a little a great New Testament thing that's called laying on hands. And so as we circle around Clark, I would invite the session and uh, any other members of the church that want to come and, and lay hands on these new members, and uh, we'll uh, pray a blessing. Father, we are, are just blessed by life, and as we celebrate this morning, uh, Clark's uh, transitioning to, to a, a new community, we just pray your blessing upon him, and Father, we pray uh, for these uh, new faces, uh, though they're not really new, uh, faces of folks, that, men and women who have loved you and who have now you know, poured their commitment to the next level, and so we just pray uh, that you would guard their steps, that you would bless their homes that you would bless their hearts as they uh, continue to serve you, not just in this building, but as they continue to serve outside the building to share the, just the blessing of what it means to be part of your kingdom. Thank you for life, and we just pray your Holy Spirit to, to bless us as we continue on this day, as we celebrate, and we just enjoy all that you've offered us as your sons and daughters. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Welcome.